Hello and welcome everyone. Fuel is very excited to partner with Tufin for today's webinar. Our guest speaker is John Morin, the technical director within business development at Tufin. As a cybersecurity professional with over 15 years of experience, John oversees the technical relationship with Tufin growing network of security partners. John previously worked as a product manager at SME for SOAR Technology, driving product innovations and expanding the partner ecosystem. John Host holds a uh, bachelor's in computer forensics, a master's in informational assurance, and an MBA. John, thank you so much for being here. I turn it over to you. Great. Thanks, Ty, and thanks everybody for uh, joining today. Uh, I'm excited to talk to you guys a little bit today about uh, visualizing and controlling your hybrid network. Obviously, you know, hybrid is uh, is a hot topic these days, right? It means a lot of things to uh, to a lot of different people, and it comes with a lot of uh, inherent challenges, right? There, there's certainly uh, value that you get from uh, making a, a hybrid network and optimizing your network in the way that that makes sense for your use cases and uh, your enterprise. But uh, but there's some challenges that we need to to overcome to really get that value out of your hybrid network. So. Uh, so I think this is a great topic. I'm, I'm excited to be here to talk about it today. Um, please, uh, there's Q&A available throughout the entire uh, session today. So uh, if questions come up, you know, unfortunately, we can't uh, unmute everybody, but uh, I want this to be as interactive as we can. So if you have questions, uh, please put them in the Q&A. I want this to uh, be relevant to, uh, to to everybody who's in attendance today. So if there's topics you want to discuss or if you want to dive a little bit deeper into anything that uh, we're talking about today, please put it in the Q&A. Nobody wants to just uh, hear me talk for, uh, for an hour. So uh, please, uh, let's make this as interactive as we can. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and, and jump right in. So I, I want to kind of start with uh, some level setting. Right, and, and some of this may seem kind of obvious, but um, but it, it it's a good level set, and uh, and it really feeds into some of the deeper discussions that that we're going to have here. So when we talk about a, a hybrid network here at Tufin, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about everything from uh, so your traditional on-premise networks, your your data centers, your your enterprise network with your uh, physical or or virtual uh, firewalls connecting all of your different branch offices. We're talking about private cloud, and, and usually when we talk about private cloud, we're talking about uh, SDN, software defined networks. Public cloud, obviously, right? We're talking about moving things into the public cloud and the connectivity that needs to exist into the public cloud. And then microservices, right? Uh, you know, more and more enterprises are moving towards a, a microservice approach, Kubernetes, uh, that sort of thing. And they may be running that uh, on prem. Maybe running it in the public cloud, or maybe running it in your private cloud, or a hybrid approach of, of the hybrid approach, right? Uh, so, uh, so all of these things, uh, depending on your deployment, may combine to make up your uh, your hybrid network. So, you know, obviously here at Tufin, um, if you're not familiar with Tufin, we uh, tend to be in in the very sort of uh, largest, most complex networks, right? So. Think of the, the, the very largest sort of global enterprises. Uh, that tends to be our sweet spot because we really um, bring all these different technologies together and, uh, and allow enterprises to, um, to, to get the best use out of them, to be most efficient and to manage compliance uh, across those very, very complex networks. So we have some pretty unique insights into uh, what some of these very, very large enterprises are, are seeing and uh, how they're approaching their hybrid network. So I wanna talk for a minute again, just level setting. What do we hear from our customers when we talk about hybrid networks? And the first thing we'll talk about is what's, what's driving the move to hybrid, right? Uh, we're not just doing it for the sake of, of doing it because it's the next cool thing. We're really trying to achieve some, uh, some value, some, some improvement out of this move to hybrid. And again, these may be um, you know, things that, that seem very obvious, but when we talk later about um, some of the challenges that we get from a hybrid network, and we talk about trying to solve those problems, we need to keep the, these drivers in mind, right? Because if our challenges are negating uh, the, the value that we're trying to get, they're really not solutions. So 
increasingly distributed workforce, right? The, you know, this was happening before COVID. Everybody kind of points to, to COVID as uh, the real spike in it. It was certainly happening before, but it's it's happening now at really unprecedented levels. And, and that is certainly driving a move to uh, to hybrid. Cost reduction is is another one, right? The, you know, moving to the cloud isn't always cheaper. Uh, but when you talk about uh, things like being able to scale on demand, things like that, you can achieve real cost reduction uh, depending on your use cases by, by moving to cloud or, or moving to hybrid. The increase in speed and agility uh, is, is another obvious one, right? Uh, we're moving to uh, DevOps, DevSecOps style uh, methods of development. Um, we're, we're moving to infrastructure as code, right? And that, that's all to uh, increase uh, the speed of our business, increase the speed at which we're able to innovate and increase the way, how, would, how agile we can be. And the hybrid cloud is, is really sort of uniquely uh, positioned to be able to deliver that. Need to scale on demand, uh, kind of talked about that already, but uh, the ability to, uh, to scale up and scale down, right? Um, a lot of times our workloads are, um, are up and down uh, for, for various reasons, right? We need to be able to scale up very quickly when we need that and then be able to scale back down, right? Goes to that cost reduction. And finally, uh, business transformation initiatives, right? There, there's a wide variety of reasons why you might be looking to, uh, to, to transform the way you're doing business. Could be for compliance purposes uh, it could be for speed and agility right but the hybrid cloud when done correctly can really help support some of those uh, business transformation initiatives things like uh, you know zero trust things like that um, can really benefit from a, a hybrid approach to our enterprise network so with that in mind what are some of the challenges that, that you face when you're trying to move to uh, to a hybrid cloud First of all, it's very fundamental differences in, in technologies and how they're implemented. You know, 20 years ago when we were looking at, uh, you know, just on-premise firewalls and, and even uh, next-gen firewalls, we, we became very comfortable with, uh, with those technologies, how they worked, how they were deployed, and how we, how we secure those effectively. And when we talk about things like uh, SDN, when we talk about multi-cloud and, and even microservices, the way they function and the way we secure them is very fundamentally different. And that can pose a challenge, right? We, uh, especially when you talk about moves to, uh, you know, to cloud and things like that, that may be uh, more public facing and more exposed, you have a, an incredibly increased potential attack surface and if we don't understand how to properly secure that, it opens the enterprise up to uh, really increased risk. The, uh, the solutions, the security solutions that we're deploying on top of those are also very fundamentally different, right? So uh, things like cloud have, um, uh, the public cloud vendors have their own sort of cloud native security solutions that, that is part of what we manage here at Tufin. But there are third party solutions that are specifically designed to work uh, on top of uh, the public cloud or, or SDN or Kubernetes. And those again, very fundamentally uh, different. And there's a skills gap, right? You know, this is, this is not something that people have dealt with for the last 20 years. This is something we're kind of learning as we're going. And that's another challenge that we have. Connecting and securing networks is, is another challenge, right? We're, we're no longer sort of dealing with uh, this, you know, perimeter, right? The perimeter is kind of just gone. And we have to worry about uh, connecting all of these different networks that, that make up our hybrid network, but securing them, right? Ensuring that we have the connection, you know, we have the, 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 uh, the connection necessary to function as a business, but also that connection is, uh, is secure. We have a huge increase in the number of security solutions uh, as we move to a hybrid cloud, right? As I mentioned, there are specific tools that are just meant for uh, securing public cloud. There are specific tools for uh, Kubernetes and, and networking on top of Kubernetes to uh, security Kubernetes networks. And again, in the, in the SDN space, and what that's caused is really an explosion in, in the number of security solutions that you have to deal with. And that causes a number of problems. Your, your visibility 
becomes very siloed, right? You have a specific security solution that maybe uh, you're using to uh, manage your, your compliance and uh, security inside of cloud. But that doesn't see the big picture of what's going on on a premise or what's going on inside of, of Kubernetes. So you decrease your visibility, you become much more siloed. And that makes it very difficult to understand the overall impact of security policies and really effectively assess the security posture of your network. It makes it much more complex to manage. You have different teams that are involved in that and troubleshooting becomes exponentially more difficult because again, you, you're very siloed. You don't have that sort of full picture. And how do you assess compliance across there? Sure, your, your cloud network may be compliant based on you know, scanning or the security solution you have in the cloud. Your on-premise network may be compliant, but what about that connectivity in between, right? How, how, do, you, how do you accurately assess that and determine, you know, am I assessing uh, the, the, the proper uh, regulations and, and can I even have visibility into that? I mentioned the, the silos and the different teams involved in management. Um, you know, that just, you know, that when you, when you increase the number of people involved and the number of teams involved, processes more, get more complex. Uh, it takes longer to get things done. And so the result is that a lot of the agility that we hope to get out of the hybrid network um, really gets gets sucked up into these silos, into these complex processes, and you, and you get finger pointing back and forth, and and you run into governance issues, right? Who controls what? And finally, um, you oops, sorry, skip way ahead here. Let me go back. There we go. Um, and and you have this expectation of of increased speed and agility, and and that can pose uh, a challenge, right? Uh, you know, management expects, hey, we're going to go to hybrid cloud, we're, we're moving to cloud, and, and our speed agility is just going to go through the roof, right? And that puts tremendous pressure on, uh, on the security and the applications teams to try to deliver that, uh, that increase in, in speed and agility without sacrificing security. And, you know, in, in practice, that's, that's very difficult to do. So, what are some of the questions that we, we hear from our customers, right? What, what are they coming to us to, to solve or what are they looking for a solution for? Most common question we get is what, what's going on on my hybrid network, right? We talked about how things uh, are very siloed and our customers really have challenges figuring out, hey, what, what's the big picture here, right? So what does my hybrid network look like? I understand what's going on in my cloud. I understand what's going on in Kubernetes, but how, how do I put that all together and, and really understand what's going on? What are the end-to-end -end effect uh, of my policies, right? Um, I'm allowing something on this firewall, but does that translate to the cloud? Or, you know, I have this cloud security group that uh, is allowing traffic, but I also have this virtual firewall in my cloud um, why, why is one working and, and not the other, or, you know, how do I combine those and how do I optimize my hybrid network? Right. And again, that's really going back to that sort of visibility of, you know, I need to understand what's going on so I can figure out maybe what's suboptimal. How can I reconfigure this? Uh, how can I take out latency, things like that to make my network as, as optimized, uh, as I can. Next common theme we get is uh, how do I deal with risk and compliance? So am I currently compliant, right? Um, and can I demonstrate that I'm currently compliant? If I'm subject to, to annual or, or some other type of uh, audits, how can I demonstrate to an auditor, to uh, stakeholders, to shareholders that, uh, that I am currently compliant, not just on-premise, not just in the cloud, but across my entire state. And how can I ensure compliance moving forward, right? Um, you know, you, you can spend uh, two months before an audit to uh, find all of your, your violations and, and get ready. And, uh, you know, on, on day zero of the audit, you're, you are compliant. But how can I ensure compliance moving forward? So that 10 months from now, I'm not in that, you know, two month scramble to try to get compliant again. 
And how can I make compliance less of a burden, right? Again, going back to what we're hoping to, uh, to achieve, why are people moving to the hybrid cloud? It's about speed, it's about agility, and oftentimes you, you kind of see uh, speed and agility and, and security and compliance as, as, you know, like polar opposites, right? And, and our customers are coming to us saying, how, how can we make this less of a burden? How can we solve this problem? And how can I move faster, right? I, I, you know, I want that speed and agility of my hybrid network. How can I move faster? How can I take these, you know, processes, uh, you know, especially around change management, where I have to ensure compliance, compliance has to be baked in. How can I streamline that process and get that speed and agility without sacrificing security? And how can I facilitate better cross-functional collaboration? How can I break down those silos, right? We talked about those silos introduce friction and that reduces speed. So if I can increase my cross-functional collaboration, I can get better speed, I can get better agility, I can make better decisions, and it's much easier to, to, uh, to maintain compliance. So with all that in mind, we've got all that level setting, we've heard what, what our customers are telling us, what, what do we need to do? How can we effectively uh, manage our hybrid networks and get the most value out of them? Well, we need to increase our visibility, right? And that needs to be unified visibility across the entire hybrid network. It needs to be across teams, reduce those silos. It needs to be across technologies. So we're not just getting uh, a tiny bit of the picture, we're seeing the whole picture in a, in a unified view, understanding the impact of uh, one policy over here across the entire uh, communication stream across our cloud and across our policies. And we need to do it without the need for many, many tools because that just creates, that, that builds more silos, that creates more sort of the, the swivel chair work and uh, it, it induces uh, more, uh, more errors, right? You, you increase your chance for errors, switching between tools, copying and pasting, things like that. We need to ensure compliance on our hybrid network and we need to do it automatically, right? If we wanna have that speed and agility, Compliance can't be a completely manual process. And we need to do it now and we need to do it in the future, meaning we need to be compliant and we need to ensure that we can maintain continuous compliance, not just, you know, sort of point in time compliance. And again, we need to do it across the entire hybrid network. So we're not just looking at bits and pieces and assessing our, our compliance in sort of these little microcosms. And we need to do it without sacrificing scale and without sacrificing agility, meaning that uh, you know we we can't slow the process down. We can't uh, we can't let security become an inhibitor to what we're trying to achieve out of our hybrid networks. And we need to maintain agility. We need to find that balance of security and agility, and allow both of those really allow security to become an enabler of agility, right? make those processes, make those security processes so good that, uh, that they're actually speeding things up, not slowing things down. And we can do that through uh, intelligent automation, right? Um, you know, automation is a term that gets thrown around a lot. And so it's gonna automate everything, right? Well, you know, automation is only as good as, as the inputs. And so uh, we need to really look at how we're doing automation to ensure that we're doing it in a way that, that is effective and it's not increasing risk, it's not increasing error rates, things like that. And do it without sacrificing compliance, right? So we can't just throw automation around willy nilly. We need to make sure that, uh, that we're, we're, we're doing so with an eye on uh, compliance. So real quick, because uh, I wanna save time, uh, a lot of time to get uh, into the demo and uh, get into uh, any Q&A that uh, we might have. Just talk briefly kind of about, uh, about what we do. So, you know, Tufin, we, we talk uh, about, um, about security policies, right? That's really uh, what we do and across the entire hybrid networks. We say we are the security policy company. We show you what can talk to what and who can talk to whom. 
and you can see kind of you know customers and, and patents and, and things like that. But what I really want to get into is uh, is how we do it. All of that stuff that we talked about. How can we help deliver that and make your hybrid networks uh, much more efficient, give you better visibility, and allow you to automate better? So when we talk about Tufin, what we're really talking about is this Tufin orchestration suite. It's a, a, a suite of products, um, uh, sort of our three traditional on-premise products that uh, are, are companions to each other, secure track, secure change, and secure app. These uh, sort of come together to give you uh, visibility and compliance through secure track, uh, change automation through secure change, and then with secure app, you can layer that on top, and it really gives you an application-centric way to uh, manage your security policies. One of the uh, newest products in our portfolio that was uh, launched about two years ago now is Secure Cloud. And uh, that really brings the, the, the whole hybrid cloud together. So we can bring in um, public cloud, which, which we do a little bit in track and change as well, and also Kubernetes to really give you that sort of uh, full picture. You can see here we have uh, the security policy management um, sort of overlay down here. And this is really important when we talk about compliance. We'll see uh, a part of our product called the unified security policy. And that's really what this is. And, and this allows you to define uh, regulations, define security policy guardrails that you're going to apply to your, um, to your estate, to your enterprise network, regardless of the vendor, regardless of the location, whether it's uh, a virtual firewall in the cloud, SDN, uh, we're going to apply those security policy guardrails uniformly and really give you that end-to-end -end, uh, compliance picture there. So we kind of talk about our, our customers as going on a uh, security policy management journey. And that really starts when you connect secure track to all of your firewalls, your routers, your SDNs, your cloud platforms, and it gives you uh, visibility, right? What's going on on my network? You can define that unified security policy, and it really gives you um, uh, just a, a picture of, of what your network looks like today. And then once you have that level of visibility, you usually start kind of the cleanup phase, right? Where you're, you've identified everything in your network. Um, there's there's going to be things that, you know, suboptimal configurations, maybe compliance violations, things like that. So our customers usually go through kind of a, a, a cleanup phase, right? And this is true whether you're looking strictly on-premise or uh, across the entire hybrid network. Once you've uh, finished the cleanup phase and you're happy with the, the state of your network here, you kind of go into uh, analysis and, and design, right? So this is where you've, you've had your network cleaned up and now you're gonna start utilizing Tufin to uh, perform your change analysis and your change design automatically, right? So you're, you're getting rid of some of those manual processes. You're allowing Tufin's intelligent automation to, to start to augment your security team, stop wasting the, your engineers' times with tasks that uh, they don't need to perform. And then finally, we look at application-driven automation. That's our secure, uh, secure app product. And, uh, and finally, zero-touch automation, right? That's uh, kind of where we all want to get to, but you can see that we kind of take this, this journey from very, very secure, uh, but, but maybe a little bit slow um, and, and kind of move up so that we, we're being secure, but we're staying away from that sort of agile, but risky, right? That, that's really, you know, if you take nothing else out of this, uh, what we're trying to achieve is that security without compromising business agility. So we looked at this earlier, you know, this is our hybrid network, what's all connected. And really what Tufin is trying to do and, and what we do deliver is security policy management across your entire hybrid network, right? So from your on-premise to your, your SDN, your public cloud vendors, these are just kind of examples of some of the vendors that, that we support. Um, but really across this continuum from uh, your data center, all the way down to your microservices uh, running into the cloud. Now, briefly, uh, because um, 
this I think is very important when we talk about uh, the hybrid network. I just want to touch on our, our partner ecosystem here briefly. Um, we have a, a, a wide variety of partners that uh, that we work with. Um, when you when you look at the amount of uh, hybrid network visibility and compliance capabilities that we have, we have a, a sort of a unique ability to add a lot of value to third party solutions and also uh, allow third party solutions to uh, bring value back into Tufin and really enhance your ability to manage your hybrid networks. So you can see just some of the vendors uh, on here. Um, I'll pick out just a, a few just to talk about briefly. Uh, with our vulnerability scanning uh, integrations, we have uh, two actually different applications uh, within Tufin that you can install that take vulnerability data and uh, enrich, uh, enrich that data with network context, right? So if you think about the vulnerability data you usually get, you're going to be getting, um, you know, scan results from your public cloud, things that are workloads that are running inside your SDN, uh, things that are running in your in your data center, maybe, you know, user workstations, things like that, right? And it's very, very difficult, uh, as we know, it's something we've struggled with for a long time to help to, to prioritize those events, right? Go beyond a CVSS score and say, what what is really uh, going to pose the greatest risk to my enterprise. And we can take Tufin's very unique view of the network because we understand connectivity, we understand the security policies, and we can overlay that onto your vulnerability scan data and say, hey, uh, you know, this, um, this CVSS score is vulnerability with a, a score of 9.5. Uh, you've got all kinds of compensating network controls in front of that, right? Because it's a it's a critical business system that you can't upgrade. We know it's vulnerable, but you've got a firewall in front of it and, and it's very difficult to get to, probably not as big a risk. Whereas this, um, you know, score of, of seven over here, this vulnerability is, is in my DMZ. It's network exploitable and you can get there from the internet, right? We can help you sort of uh, bump those up. And again, it doesn't matter where that's located, uh, where, wherever that is on your, your hybrid network, we can add that sort of uh, level of insight. Uh, and then security orchestration is, is another very popular one. And again, the ability to uh, take all this data that we're getting across the hybrid network and extend that visibility to the, uh, to the compliance, or to, excuse me, to the security operations teams, right? So that when they're responding to an incident, Again, anywhere on the hybrid network could be uh, one day in the cloud, the next day it's on premise, SDN, and they have that level of visibility that they can use to properly triage, prioritize, and if necessary, respond and, and contain uh, alerts. Um, question here, can you elaborate more on one of your slides when you say increased visibility uh, in a hybrid environment with a minimum of tools? Yeah, so, so what I mean by uh, increasing visibility with a, a, a minimum number of tools, um, you know, every, every tool, right, every native security tool um, provides fantastic visibility into what they do, right? So the, uh, every cloud vendor, every public cloud vendor has a, uh, a security uh, dashboard of some sort, in some cases, several security dashboards that you can utilize to gain visibility into the security on that public cloud vendor, right? But let's just say, for example, you're using uh, AWS, Azure, and GCP in different areas of, of your enterprise for, for different reasons, right? From the security team's perspective, I can log into each one of those tools and I can, I can log into the AWS console and, and figure out what's going on there. And then oh, I wanna look at Azure. So I've got to go log into the Azure tool and, and use their security, which, you know, is, they're all very good, but they all present things a little bit different and you're forced to log into multiple tools and, uh, and you don't get that complete picture, right? You're, you're not seeing what's connecting Azure to AWS. You're only seeing that sort of microcosm of that individual vendor. So you want to try to, uh, to reduce those tools to, to, to kind of get that all in one place to, you know, one, unify your visibility, right? So whether you're looking at, at policies or reports from Azure or AWS, they look the same, much easier to digest, but also that, that missing connectivity in between, right? There's a gap there in each one of those vendor tools where they're, they're not necessarily seeing 
what's going on between Azure and AWS. And they don't know what connectivity, right? Their, their visibility stops when they hit Azure or when it, when it hits AWS. Uh, so they don't understand, you know, what can go on beyond that, right? So we want to sort of minimize those tools. And, and if we can get, you know, one tool or, or you know, a couple of tools that, uh, that provide us that full level of visibility, full knowing that, you know, at some point you're going to have to go into, you know, one tool to, to, to get something out, right? Um, but day-to-day -day operations, it, it makes things much, much easier and, uh, and really reduces the, the chances of, of errors, right? Or, or omissions, things being missed. So the last thing I want to touch on is uh, is the Tufin Marketplace. This is something that uh, we have online. You can uh, just Google Tufin Marketplace and go look. Uh, you'll see things like the vulnerability management uh, integration uh, that I talked about. You'll see things like uh, the SOAR integrations that I talked about and, and a lot more, right? So you can see some of the stuff over here on the, the left-hand side. And, and this, you don't have to be a Tufin customer. You can go look at some of these integrations that we have. Obviously, you have to be a a Tufin customer to uh, to use them, uh, but you can just get an idea of uh, of you know how we're extending our our capabilities into the hybrid network and and how we're really uh, taking in third party data to help more effectively uh, manage and automate on the hybrid network through a lot of these uh, different integrations. Some of them, if if you are a Tufin customer, you probably know, but uh, a lot of these integrations are free. Uh, some of them there, there is a charge for, but there's always a, a demo period, things like that. So if you're curious uh, about some of this third party stuff that we're doing, I'd highly encourage you to go out and, uh, and check out the Tufin Marketplace. And with that, we've, we've gone, we've suffered through enough slides. I want to uh, actually hop into the product and actually show you uh, some of the stuff we're doing and, and how we're actually addressing those challenges that, uh, that we talked about, right? wasn't just talking to uh, hear myself talk, we, we can actually help you solve uh, some of these problems. So as we walk through this demo, um, you know, obviously, I mean, we could spend hours just going through the product, but, uh, but I want to kind of keep in mind uh, that sort of where we ended up, right? What do we need to do to get the most of our hybrid network? Increase visibility, ensure compliance, maintain uh, agility. And, and so we'll show you kind of how we do that. So what we're, we're looking at here is, uh, is the secure track dashboard, right? I mentioned that secure track is kind of the, the base of the suite. It's what provides that visibility and compliance. So it's, it's a logical place to start here. And this, when you log in, you get a very quick overview of what's going on in your hybrid network, right? This is everything. You see the, the, you know, there's not a spot here for you know, on-premise, not a spot here for SDN cloud, right? This is everything. So how many rules do I have? How many devices am I managing, right? You get a very, very quick overview of what's going on uh, on your network. You'll see things like rules for cleanup, highly permissive rules. Those are things we'll, we'll talk about later. We've got some more uh, detailed information here about cleanup and optimization, uh, violations. These are all things that, uh, that I'll show you kind of in more detail. Um, and then what's recently changed on my network, right? And again, doesn't matter where that change was made, we're, we're seeing it all right here. So we talked about, you know, visibility and understanding the, the policies uh, inside of my network. And when you wanna get really, really deep down into your hybrid network policies, you do that through our rule viewer. So this here is, uh, is every rule in your policy base um, that you can browse through. And you can see, I mean, there's over uh, 1,800 of them. So it's going to take a while to scroll through all of them. Uh, but you can see here, you know, the vendors, right? So we see some, some AWS here. Um, but more often what you're going to be doing in here is, uh, is searching, right? So we have the ability to perform very granular searches uh, across your entire policy base. So if we just say uh, source IP, P is, uh, right? So we can start to perform um, searches uh, over our entire policy base. And if you see here, I'm just searching for source IP address, right? And keep in mind that you can get much more complex 
uh, in your queries. And, and some of the uh, dashboard uh, widgets, as we'll see, will actually bring you back to queries. It's a great way to, uh, to kind of help you uh, get started with the rule viewer. Uh, question in the chat, can the tool handle more than 10,000 rules? Uh, yeah, 10,000 rules. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, we, we have uh, customers with, with many more than 10,000 or excuse me, 100,000 rules. Uh, so yes, uh, scales very, very well. Um, you can um, uh, get much more uh, advanced here. So we can say, and, and then we can, you know, just, you know, if we wanted to search for a destination IP, right? Um, and you can do ands and ors and nots and contains and parentheses. So you can get very complex, but we're, we're just gonna look here at uh, just this example of source IP. And you can see here, now we start to see some different vendors show up here. So we've got some policies in AWS that match this source. We've got some uh, policies from Cisco Firepower, Nexus, Border Manager uh, up in uh, Azure. We've got some Azure policies, Panorama, here's some uh, NSX. We've got uh, Zscaler policies, right? So, you know, when we talk about, um, you know, the, the need to reduce the number of, of tools, right? Going back to that first question we had there, and, you know, why, why, why do you want that sort of single, you know, single unified interface, right? If I had all of these different firewalls and, and you know, it's a demo environment, right? So maybe you wouldn't have, you know, Firepower, or Nexus, and Fortinet. Maybe you'd only have, you know, three firewall vendors instead of, you know, four or five, right? But still, you've got to log into each one of those and do this search and say, okay, you know, it was my source IP. And then you've got to probably manually take that data out, put it into a spreadsheet, right? Well, here I can see it uh, all in one place, right? Very easily understand what's providing access across my entire hybrid network. What, what devices are providing access uh, from this uh, source? I can look very quickly at the number of devices over here, right? So this is just a, a quick device list. So if I wanted to focus maybe on only my, uh, my cloud policies, right? I can do that very quickly. And the other thing I can do from here is uh, is double click on any one of these here. So uh, let's just take this uh, I don't know, firepower as an example here, right? Uh, I can click on any one of these and see the policy details in a very normalized way, right? So if we see here, this is the the firepower rule that I just looked at here. Let's um, scroll down and let's find something that's not a uh, not a traditional firewall. How about SX? So here's our NSX policy, right? Very, very different, you know, fundamentally different technology, uh, but we're bringing this together in a very unified experience so that you can understand things like source, destination, service. You can see other things that we're calculating when it was last modified. How permissive is this? So this is something that uh, we score based off of uh, the source, destination, and service. And when we talked about that second phase in the um, sort of the, the life cycle that our customers go through, right, the cleanup phase, uh, this is something that you're going to want to look at, right? Start looking for all of my permissive rules and, uh, and potentially uh, reducing the attack surface. If maybe, maybe I don't need this any here, maybe I could limit this to just HTTPS SSH, right? Um, lower that permissiveness. Whether the rule is shadowed, whether there's any policy violations, right? Very, very, very granular uh, details, uh, very granular view of your policies, you know, regardless of where they are um, on the hybrid network. I think one of the, the coolest things uh, to demo anyway, and, uh, and probably the top five coolest features altogether in, in the product is our topology map, right? We talked about getting that visibility and trying to understand, you know, just what's going on in my hybrid network, right? How does it all work? If we zoom in here, this is a, uh, a topology map of your network, regardless of uh, whether it's, a, you know, on-premise device, right? You can see some, uh, some FortiGate stuff here. Uh, we have some uh, connections over here to Azure over an IPsec tunnel. Some more Azure stuff going back to uh, FortiGates, right? The MPLS tunnels here, uh, Juniper devices. Here's uh, some of the NSXV stuff that we looked at. I believe there's some more Azure down here. Uh, uh, some Palo stuff going into an AWS data center, right? 
So again, breaking down those, those silos of technology, those silos of visibility, and showing you all in one place uh, what your actual network topology looks like. How is your hybrid network connected across vendors, across even you know, product categories, right? And we can do that because we have very deep visibility into uh, the configuration of all of these devices. So your routes, your interfaces, uh, you know, your security policies, your groups, things like that. And, uh, and, and because we have that very, very deep visibility, we can even take it one step further and we can do path analysis. So let me just pull up a query here that uh, should have, let's try, I think this one will work. Uh, should have some good results here. So uh, what we're doing is we're querying this, this topology map from uh, a source to a destination over a particular service, right? So in this case, it's a, a slash 32 to a subnet over HTTPS, right? These can be subnets, these can be uh, security groups, they can be users, host names. Um, if you're into ACI, you can have EPGs here. Uh, but however you choose to, to specify your source and destination in your service, then we can hit find path and we're gonna search this topology map and actually see um, two things. One, is there a route from the source to the destination? And we see in this case, uh, there is. If there was not, we get an error message popping up saying that a path uh, didn't exist. But perhaps uh, more importantly, we can see some of these icons are different, right? So here's our source as we progress along, but you see these icons here are different. What that indicates is uh, whether or not that traffic was permitted or denied by policy, right? So we see here this little red stop here. So if I right click on this, Palo Alto device and say, show me the matching rules, we can see that this policy or this, uh, this imaginary traffic would be blocked by the uh, implicit uh, deny rule, right? And that's probably the same on, on a majority of these. Um, so, you know, understanding the connectivity and, uh, and again, I talked about sort of that, that lack of visibility you know, sort of in the gaps between vendor A and, and vendor B and, and, you know, understanding, yeah, okay, my policy here allows this or blocks this, but how does that impact the rest of my network? Well, right here, I can, I can see that in a very, very uh, easy to understand graph, right? Where's my traffic going? Um, you know, this is on-premise stuff here, on-premise stuff. Uh, and then all the way out into uh, my cloud, into Azure, right? And I can even see my Azure policies here. So it makes it very easy to understand. And, and just the troubleshooting capabilities of this is, uh, is, is huge, right? Uh, geez, I think I should be able to get there and I can't. Um, I don't understand, or maybe I don't have visibility into it, right? It's a different team that controls our cloud and I'm on the networking team, the firewall team, right? That, you know, there's finger pointing back and forth. They're saying it's me, I'm saying it's them. Um, just go in here really quick, do a topology query and say, oh, you know, here's the device that's blocking that. Okay, so that's that's a little bit about visibility and I, I need to speed it up a little bit because I, I have a few more things I wanted to get into. So, um, so compliance, right? We covered some of what we can do in visibility. How can we help ensure compliance in a, in a hybrid network without uh, without making those sacrifices that we talked about, right? Still achieving those um, those goals here. One of the main things that I talked about when we when we looked at that uh, uh, sort of overview of our products was the unified security policy, and I want to show you exactly what that looks like because that's really at the heart of what we do around compliance. You can think of the unified security policy as a set of, of guardrails that we can apply to our policy, right? So the USP, unified security policy by itself, does not enforce policy. It does not create policies on your devices. What you do with the unified security policy is set a desired state. You set those guardrails and you say, moving forward from now on, this is the confines that I want all future security policies to, uh, to, to conform to, right? And we'll assess existing security policies against them as well. So you can see it's built in kind of this matrix style. Now, each of these uh, on the top and, uh, and along the side here are uh, a series of zones. 
Now these zones can be made up of different uh, IPs, subnets, uh, security groups, uh, things like that, right? So we support, uh, you know, different mechanisms for, for mapping uh, assets back to, to zones. And another one of those integrations that uh, we looked at on that integration wheel was uh, IPAM, right? So you don't have to build these zones out manually. If you have an IPAM solution already in place that is uh, sort of working as your source of truth for your IP addressing in your enterprise, great, we can sync with that. We can build these zones out automatically define them automatically. And every time you change it in the IPAM, it will be reflected in Tufin. So we can make sure that we're applying these guardrails correctly, even as your dynamic uh, addressing scheme changes over time. And so regardless of how you're defining these zones, what we're doing here is we're saying uh, what should or should not be allowed in these zones, right? So you can see here, interzone traffic in this case is, is allowed. Green check markings are allowing all traffic. Between these two zones, it's blocked. More commonly, what you're going to set up is, is something like this, where you can see this sort of customized icon. And you get, if we hover over, you get kind of a, a snapshot of it. But if we actually click on it here, we can see how we can define this. So uh, we're saying uh, we're either going to allow or block, right? Kind of a, you know, either a blacklist or a whitelist style approach to, to this particular portion of the USB. And then what do we want to allow? So in this case, we're saying, uh, from this zone to this zone, only allow these particular services, right? And you can specify port and protocol here as well. You can also add much more qualitative uh, uh, requirements, right? So any policy has to have an explicit source or destination. It has to be logged, right? Things like that. And then the severity. So if a policy violates this particular aspect of the unified security policy, how severe is that, right? And you might define that differently based off of, um, you know, the, the criticality of the network segment, right? If it's, uh, so you're subject to PCI, for example, and this zone is a PCI zone, you might say this violation is very critical. Uh, if it is on your printer network, you might say, well, it's a medium severity, right? And you can handle those, escalate those uh, alerts appropriately, right? So this is how we define that unified security policy, those security policy guardrails that we're going to apply to all of the policies across our hybrid network, regardless of, of what vendor or where it lives in the hybrid network. And you can see here, we can have multiple unified security policies. So in this case, we have 17, which is probably more than you might have in a typical enterprise because this is a demo environment. But you can see here, we have one for just corporate security, right? And this may cover your entire enterprise. You may also have uh, certain segments that are, are subject to NERC SIP. Uh, or PCI, right? We have an example for uh, NIST 853. So you can overlay these uh, unified security policies on different portions of your network, or even on the same portion of the network to cover different aspects of your security program, right? But again, the important thing is that it, it doesn't matter at the end of the day to Tufin whether that violation exists uh, in a firewall up in the cloud or in an uh, SDN running on-prem or in the cloud or traditional firewall. We're going to apply those guardrails uh, very uniformly. So if we go back to our rule viewer here, uh, or actually let's go back to the, uh, to the dashboard here. Um, so talking about uh, compliance here, if we look at uh, down here, USP compliance, we can see all of the rules uh, with our violations, right? And we can see them here by uh, severity, uh, by device. And uh, I see a lot of these are, are kind of uh, firewall type things, but um, so here's, for example, uh, NSX here, right? So we can see, again, the violations across our, our entire uh, hybrid network broken down here. And any one of these we can, uh, we can drill into and uh, uh, the demo gods, they're going to get me eventually, it always happens. Um, so you can see here, again, we're, we're pivoting back to that uh, rule viewer, right? So we're looking at uh, what we saw in that graph now displayed as a query in the rule viewer here. 
and we can see all of the policies with a high severity violation. We can click on any one of these and we can either click here to go to violations or we can go to the violations tab here and it's going to show us uh, exactly what those uh, policy violations are, right? So again, when we were in that cleanup phase of the uh, sort of the, the uh, approach to zero touch automation, um, this is some of the stuff that our customers are, are doing. And as networks become hybrid, uh, they tend to, to, to kind of grow and outpace themselves. And, and you, you tend to find a lot of, you know, suboptimal configurations, a lot of um, uh, potential policy or, or compliance violations in those environments. This is a great way to start understanding what those are and to start uh, identifying them and cleaning them up. So we can see uh, what the USP was, what zones it was going to and from, uh, what services are in violation and what the security requirement is. So I should be blocking all according to this USP, but uh, we have uh, several services being allowed, right? And you can then uh, create tickets inside of uh, secure change to, to remediate those, right? Or maybe you need to go back to the application owner first. Maybe you need to create an exception in the USP. You can do that uh, as well. If there's a business justification for this one policy, right? You can certainly do that. So if we go back to the dashboard, just some other compliance and cleanup things here real quick, you can see uh, rules for cleanup and rules for optimization. So again, this is sort of that second phase, right? But it, it ties into uh, compliance because these, these cleanup and optimization things are not necessarily uh, over risk, but they induce complexity that, uh, that builds up, especially in a, in a hybrid network. And that complexity over time introduces risk. So these are other things that you can clean up, things like uh, rules that are fully shadowed, meaning there's, there's a, you know, you have a slash 16 rule and then a slash 24 rule, right? That, that slash 24 rule is shadowed. It's never gonna get hit because of that slash 16 rule, right? And that introduces complexity, but it also introduces potential for risk because what if you, you wanna get rid of that access and you delete that slash 16 rule thinking that, well, now I've removed that access, right? So you've got this 24 into here that has never been hit before because it was shadowed, but now it's providing access, even though you thought you removed that access, right? So it goes towards, uh, towards risk and, uh, and compliance. And the very last thing I want to touch on here is, uh, is automation and uh, how we start to automate across the, uh, of the hybrid network and really, uh, again, balance that security and agility. So I'm gonna log into our secure change product and just give you a quick overview of, of some of the stuff that we can do here. So uh, within secure change, we have uh, a set of workflows, right? And these workflows are really what allows you to define what your change processes are, right? So it's not a, here's our solution, use it. It's a, here's our solution, make it your own, right? Build your existing workflows, codify those, into our product. So if we just look at something very basic like a firewall change request workflow, you can see it's made up of a, of a series of steps, right? And again, this is, you know, it's there's not a step here that says, you know, make changes in the cloud, make changes in, uh, you know, your SDN, right? This is uh, taking place across the entire hybrid network, right? You don't have separate workflows or separate steps for each sort of device you're interacting with. So you can see this is just an example workflow where we're doing things like identifying the targets of the change, uh, identifying risk, reviewing the risk, doing the design and approval, uh, committing the change, and then verifying the change. And just take note here of a, a couple little icons up here. These little A's right here on step two and step seven mean that this step is automated. So there is no uh, human or, or you know, analyst action required to complete these steps. And this can be completely customized. You can introduce more automation. We, we do have some example workflows that are completely automated. Uh, or you can uh, add extra steps here. If maybe you need to have two design uh, or two approval steps here, right, assigned to different business units, you can do that. The fully automated uh, workflow that I talked about before, where there's, you know, it's completely automated from start to finish, uh, is true except for one of these steps right here. This is a, uh, a conditional step, right? So we're doing risk review and approval. Well, if we've identified uh, no risks here, we don't need to do risk review and approval, right? 
so we can skip this. So that, that's what this step here is doing. So you can create a completely automated workflow that goes through, does the design implementation verification and will only pause if there's risks identified. How do we identify risk? Back to the USP, right? So we're looking at uh, for change that is submitted is this change going to create new risk, new USP violations in my environment? If not, then maybe you're okay with just making that change. If it does, then you know that needs to have a closer review, right? It either needs to be uh, approved by a manager or maybe sent back to the requester, right? We can also adjust third-party sources of risk. So we have things like our, our BCA that brings in vulnerability data, things like that. Uh, but that's what the uh, risk review and approval is doing. And that's how we bring that USP back in. And we're actually trying to proactively identify risk, right? Being able to find all that stuff in our existing rule base was great. And that is, you know, that's great for the compliance now. We talked about that, you know, how do I ensure that continuous compliance? That's how you do it. You bring the USP into your automation and, um, and catch those potential risks before they're introduced into the network. So let's just look real quickly because we're, we're almost at time here. Um, just at an example and, and kind of how some of this stuff works here. So you can see um, this is an access request. Now, if we go back to, uh, to step one, this is all that was supplied, right? Source, destination, service. So I want to get from these sources to these destinations over SSH, right? Now, if we go to that second step, that uh, risk review and approve, or excuse me, uh, target and uh, and risk, you see one of the very first things we've done is identified the targets for these changes. So to impact, uh, to, to affect this change right here that's been requested, these are all the places we need to make changes. Now, you know, in this case, it looks like mostly firewall stuff, but this panorama could be running in the cloud. Um, you know, you could have uh, something in your, your SDN uh, environment here, right? Um, so we're identifying those targets. We're using that same sort of topology uh, search results to identify the targets of the change, right? And again, that's that end-to-end -end visibility, that end-to-end -end change management across the entire hybrid network. So we've identified the targets. We figured out where we're going to need to make changes. And you can see we've done a risk assessment and the button's red, red is bad. So we can go in here and we can see what risk would be introduced if I made this change, going back to the USP violations here. So we can see uh, what the security requirement is and what the violations are, right? You see this creates a number of different violations across a, a number of different uh, USPs. So it's great for demo, not great for production environments. Uh, but we can see, hey, you know, what would we be, what would we be uh, introducing for risk if we progress this ticket forward. Now, that doesn't mean that you can have a business process that allows that, uh, but, uh, but you know, generally we, we're, we're thinking it's bad, right? And the very last thing I'll show you here is uh, the change designer, right? So we, we're assuming we've accepted this risk, we're, we're good with it, we're gonna roll with it. Now we can run the change designer. And what that's gonna do is look at the request, look at the targets, where do we need to make those changes, and figure out actually what challenge, uh, what changes need to be made. And the green designer icon's already lit up. It means it's already been run. So here's our designer recommendations. So we're going to say, hey, uh, for Cisco, here's uh, it's one, two, three, four devices. Here's the changes that need to be made on each device to impact that change, right? So we're adding new network groups. We're adding new rules. Um, down here is relevant interfaces allow all traffic. So you don't need to make any changes at all, right? Fortinet, you'll get something very similar here. So we can see uh, all of these uh, new objects that are gonna be uh, suggested. And then uh, for Palo Alto here on our panorama. And again, any of these could be, you know, running in the cloud, in the public cloud. Uh, we support this for, for things like NSX and ACI. So. Uh, so these changes uh, could be a combination of uh, really anywhere on si uh, inside of your hybrid network. And, uh, and finally, we have the ability to actually provision these out. So once we've accepted this risk, we've decided that that change is what we want it to be, we can provision that change out. And I know I'm, I'm running right to the end of the hour, so uh, I'm going to uh, stop there. We already kind of covered uh, Q&A. Um, 
So uh, I just want to say thank you to uh, everybody who attended. I hope this was useful. Um, I really, I, you know, I, the hybrid network, I think, is, uh, is a really powerful tool, but, but we really have to uh, think carefully about how we manage it and, and how we do compliance and visibility uh, when we start uh, really getting the complex hybrid network. So this is something that's really of interest to me. I hope it provided some value to you guys. Um, please reach out if you have any questions. My email is right there. We have our free uh, firewall audit tool that you can download uh, at no charge to uh, start getting some visibility into your SDN and, uh, and hybrid networks. Um, that's it. That's all I have. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate everybody's time. Well, hey, big thanks to Tupin and for you, John, for sharing your time, uh, experience, and knowledge with the fuel community. Um, everybody keep your eyes open for an email when um, this webinar will be available on demand, both on Fuel's website and Tupin's website. So thanks again for everybody's tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks. <laughs>